Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome, we will continue determination of sample size, determination of sample size. In this lecture, we will consider one way ANOVA and we will see that how to compute representative AN that is the replications. other way we can say that sample size. So, very quickly I will tell you the one way ANOVA part. So, you know that there will be only one factor A which will be having A levels and your H 0 is mu 1 equal to mu 2 equal to mu A all means are equal and H 1 will be mu i not equal to mu j for at least one pair for at least one pair. And this uh, with reference to the model y i j equal to mu plus tau i plus epsilon i j with reference to tau i the treatment effect h 0 tau i equal to 0 and h 1 tau i not equal to 0. Okay. So, we will do we will estimate parameters, conduct hypothesis testing, test of assessment many things, but all with reference to basically the number of data collected. So, here the total sample size is a in cross n where n is the sample size across each level of the treatment. Last, last uh, le, 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 lecture that in, in the part, part one of determination of sample size, what we have, we have learned that um, given a single population and two population case, how to compute uh, standard uh, sample size for um, using two approach, confidence interval approach and hypothesis testing approach or confidence interval framework and hypothesis testing framework. And in this case, we will see that uh, and in fact, in um, hypothesis testing framework, we have shown you the operating characteristic curve or OC curve, OC curve where beta versus n or del d or 1 minus beta versus n or d that was plotted. And we will see the similar kind of things in ANOVA, here it is not a two population case or one population case as there are a number of labels, it is a, popul a number of population case. Okay, so, that is that is what is the big difference coming from the sample size determination point of view considering the earlier lecture versus this lecture. Okay. So, we will see that how OC curve can be will be used in calculating the sample size in ANOVA and apart from OC curve, there are some other way of finding out the sample size like specifying a particular standard deviation increase and also we will we'll use the confidence interval method approach uh, what we have seen earlier. So, I, as I told you earlier also that most of the lectures what I am giving to you we are heavily dependent on the book by D. C. Montgomery design and analysis of experiment. This lecture also has been taken from that book. So, I, uh, I have you know that what is beta. So, beta is 1 minus probability reject H 0 given H 0 is false or 1 minus probability that F 0 greater than F alpha n minus n f alpha a minus 1 n minus a given h 0 is false. 
So, you know how to come do this hypothesis testing part. Interestingly, what happened when H 0 is true, this F 0 follows F distribution with A minus 1 and N minus 1 degrees of freedom, but that will be a that is that is with central non centrality parameter d equal to 0. But when H 0 is false means that the means are not equal there is some difference between the means some mean shift is there if I consider that difference is a shift or other way I can say that from one mean to another mean there is a there is there is there is a, there is a difference and then what will happen this quantity when H 0 is false F 0 will become will become non central F or it basically follows non central F distribution with A minus 1 and N minus A in numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. And here the non centrality parameter is D. So, this situation uh, can be plotted this situation can be captured using a curve called type 2 error beta versus a, pro a parameter phi, where the phi is defined like this phi square equal to a n sum total of i equal to 1 to a tau i square by a sigma square. So, what is phi square? Phi square is a n sum total of tau i square i equal to 1 to a divided by a sigma square. So, you know a this is the number of labels the factor a has you know sigma square that is the variability or variance of the response variable and you know tau i this is the treatment effect treatment effect. So, what we require? We require to know a representative n. So, fine if I consider a particular n you will be able to compute phi square. Once you able to compute phi square, so there is O c curve which basically with reference to beta versus phi. So, beta versus phi and here you see that phi is dependent on n. So, there also beta versus phi curve will tell you for a particular threshold or if we consider a beta threshold beta how how uh, how what will be the sample size and how it is to be computed. So, that is what we want to know here. So, one such operating characteristic curve is shown here you see carefully the curve. What is x axis? In x axis there are two things phi for alpha equal to 0 0.01 and phi for alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, what is alpha? Alpha is type 1 error that means probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. Now, what is y axis? Probability of accepting the hypothesis when the hypothesis null hypothesis is wrong that means that is beta. So, y axis is giving you beta, y axis is giving you beta and x axis is giving you phi where phi is phi square equal to a in sum total of tau i square by a sigma square for different values of alpha. So, essentially alpha is 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 considered because these are the two level of significance we we consider in most of the experimental studies ok. Now, so x axis and y axis is known to you now what is this this new one equal to 3. So, all of you know this is related to because we say that if h 0 is false then the F 0 the test statistics that is non central non central non central F non central F. Now, F has 
numerator degree of freedom and denominator degree of freedom numerator new one denominator new two now this new one is numerator degrees of freedom so it is three means and numerator degree of freedom usually here in case of a this f0 this follows if a minus 1 and n minus a degrees of freedom where a is the number of labels the factor assumes and in my so this is basically with reference to the treatment and this is with reference to the error so a equal to th new equal to 3 means a minus 1 equal to 3 then you see there are there are for alpha equal to 0 0.05 there are a large number of curves are there there is there is so many curves and here it is written new 2 equal to 6 7, 8, 9, 10 up to infinity it is 18. So, that means each of the curve represent represent that the relation between beta and phi for given alpha, given nu 1 and given nu 2. So, you must know what is your alpha value, what is your uh, what is your phi value phi will be computed by using this equation and then you must know what is nu 1, nu 1 is in case of ANOVA 1 way ANOVA is a minus 1, what is nu 2 n minus a and then using this information you will be able to find out the beta value. Okay. Just for a <coughs> for, for sake of calculation suppose if I say my alpha is 0 0.05 then this is the curve these are the curves what you will consider and suppose phi value is coming out to be 3 okay. and let your new 1 is 3 and let new 2 is let new 2 is your this let it be new 2 is 10, 10 means which one? 10 is this last this one. <coughs> okay, so, if 10 is this one mean this one, this one. So, under this situation if phi is 3 you go up it is meeting the curve here then project towards left and you will be getting a value of this which is maybe 0 0.013. So, this is your beta value. Okay. So, now this is the way you have to read the OC curve. Now, let us see the example. This example we have solved earlier. This is the each rate example where different uh, the power levels are considered 160 to 220 with a gap of 20 each and then 5 number of observations where collected in the same experiment were done and this was the data av available so that you have already seen. Now, <coughs> let us hope that for this particular case the four mean values population mean when power is at 160, 180, 200 and 220 the population means are the treatment means are known that is mu 1 575, 6, mu 2 600, mu 3 650, mu 4 675. Then if this is known and then mu bar will be this 625 and given the data you are in a position to, to calculate tau 1, tau 2, tau 4 and these are all population tau 1, tau 2, tau 4 because you have mu 1, mu 2, mu 3 all are known. So, mu 1 minus mu bar is 50, mu 2 minus mu bar is 25, minus 25, 25, 50 like this. So, given this tau 1, tau 2, tau 3 and tau 4, so you are in a position to compute tau i square and a is known, a is 4, sigma square is given which is no longer than 25 Armstrong per a per minute Armstrong per minute this is Armstrong. So, then 
phi square is coming as phi square equal to 2.5 n. So, what you require? You require to know what should be the sample size, so that your power of test is at least 0 0.9 means beta is 0 0.1 or less. So, under such condition what you how do you compute? How do you go about? Your case is you first know two things first you calculate phi square which is 2.5 n then you cal you know phi equal to root over 2.5 n this is phi. Once you know the phi you say what is your alpha value if you consider alpha may be 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 or anything else provided that OC curve is available. So, then what you how do you calculate you first choose n. So, n if you consider 3 then what is phi square value 2.5 into 3 7.5. So, this is 7.5 what is your phi value square root of 7.5 is 2.74 then what is your a into n minus 1 n n minus a value. So, what is a a is 4 this is 3. So, n minus 1 is 2 4 into 4 this will be 8. So, now you are in a position to use the O c curve because you can fix alpha some value you phi is known also and n minus a is 8 and your a minus 1 is 3 because here a equal to 4. So, a minus 1 is 3. So, all relevant information to use the O c curve is available now use this one. So, what will be then the value of beta. So, let us see the O c curve. No, not this one. Okay, let us see the Osi curve here. So, suppose we 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 consider now. Let me also check that what will be is our alpha value. We have considered we have considered one minus beta is point nine zero. Then you will be accepting it and an alpha value we have not written here. So, let alpha equal to point zero five. what will happen let us see, uh, but I have computed this values. So, beta is 0 0.25 anyhow then I, I know that what alpha I have considered. So, phi is 2.74 a is uh, new one is new one is so our case is phi is 2.74 new 1 is 3, new 2 is 8 and we require to know alpha. What? Because alpha I have not considered, but actually uh, we want to know beta that is beta is what and n is 3. You see new 1 is 3. So, this is the curve Achha. then our new 2 is 8. Okay, let, uh, let me check this one alpha equal to 0 0.05. So, new 2 equal to 8, 8 means this one, this one is new 2 and then our let alpha equal to 0 0.05 fine and then what is the phi value 2.74. So, 2.74 somewhere here. So, what is the 8? This is 8 suppose 2.74 somewhere here somewhere here. What is the beta value? Beta value is coming in between this. Suppose if I consider alpha equal to 0 0.01 then then what is the situation 1 to 2.74 means somewhere here and your 8 new to 8 means this one and your alpha given new 1 new 2 given phi is 2.74. So, 
So, phi will be 2.7 per somewhere here. If we see that 8 means this is the curve. So, somewhere here we are we are coming uh, like this. Okay. So, that means we are our beta is 0.25. So, we are considering alpha equal to 0 0.01 in this case. Okay. Now, it is clear. So, 0 0.01. So, given alpha 0 0.01, phi equal to 2.74, a equal to 3, a new one equal to 3 and nu 2 equal to 8, you are getting beta equal to 0 0.25 somewhere here. It will go to here, then this is 8, 8 will be this one and then when you when you come down, you see that it is matching around 2.74. So, it is a it is, there is some approximation obviously, visually we are seeing. So, 2. Point, what happened? This is 0 0.25. Then what is 1 power 0.75? What is our condition? We want that the reject null hypothesis with probability at least 0 0.90. So, if we consider n equal to 3, we our power is 0 0.75 which is below 0 0.90. So, 3 is not sufficient. Now, you consider 4. If you consider 4, 5 square become 10 and 5 become 3.16. A into n minus 1 that is nu 2 become 12 nu 1 is always 3. So, that alpha is 0 0.01. So, using all those things you will find out that beta value will be 0 0.04. Okay. So, how nu 2 equal to 12. So, nu 2 12 is means this one. This is basically nu 2 equal to this, this one is 12. And then what is the phi value here? Phi value is 3.16. So, nu 2 12 this one, phi value 3.16 somewhere here, then maybe you will when you go up and project this side, this side you will be getting the value 0 0.04. So, this is 1 uh, then 1 minus beta is 0.96. So, okay, it is more than 0 0.9. So, this is sufficient. Now, you check one more, if you take 5, it is greater than 0.99. So, okay, 4, 4 replication. So, n equal to 4 is sufficient. How many we have considered 5? 5 replications. Okay. So, this is the way you will be using OC curve in ANOVA. But, up to this discussion for in using OC curve, what you have used, why we are computing phi? Phi square equal to n sum total of tau i square by a into sigma this is what you are you are using let me let me go back a sigma square a sigma square that is what we are using now that means you require to know the tau i so tau i is population parameter so if you estimate and then you can find if the estimation is significant representative one but we only know when it will be the estimate will be representative provided the sample size is representative. We are computing sample size. So, that means we cannot say that is the representative one. So, that means actually what you require you require to know the population tau it is not possible. Under such situation what what is done the a uh, the difference between two population means for difference between two public a threshold is considered that what should be the that that the may be allowable differences between any two population means if we consider that one as d then then the theory says that suppose difference between any two population means the threshold value should be d that means it should be d or less or the difference should be as large as d under such situation this phi square calculation become n d square by 2 a sigma square. So, instead of using phi square equal to n sum tau i square by a sigma square, you can use this equation calculate and then approach of finding out what should be the value of n will remain same the way we have we have discussed. The only difference here is that 
instead of tau i square you are you are using a pre specified difference d and then find out what is the value of phi once you know phi you know you know nu 1 you know nu 2 and your alpha is given so you will be in a position to find out beta and then you will be able to find out the uh, and you can see the observe that whether it is satisfactory or not so <coughs> this example suppose if you say that the difference maximum difference 75 is acceptable then if you use this formula you are getting phi square equal to 1.125 n it is not matching with the previous one the reason is we have considered 75 is the maximum difference that is the threshold value so now if you follow n equal to 4 5 6 and then phi square phi and this is nu and this is nu 2 and then beta value from the oc curve and then 1 minus beta and you see that you require 6 at least 6 number of uh, replications or the sample size should be 6 if we consider this then the 5 rep, uh, observations are not sufficient you have to go for 6 observations so this is what using oc curve the second one is that suppose uh, okay we will use another criteria is that you are specifying that what is the, if the sigma square is the is the variance of y suppose you will you will accept certain increase of variation variation and that one you specify then what should be the sample size for that particular that percentage increase in variation that is known as specifying standard deviation increase now <coughs> you have seen that if there is a different uh, there is treatment difference treatment difference is there then what will happen suppose that if i want to know ms treatment what is the expected value of ms treatment this will be sigma square plus sum of i equal to 1 to a tau i square by a then <coughs> then if an expected value of ms error is sigma square that is we have seen earlier so if there is no treatment difference then the ms treatment expected will these two expected value become equal so if there is really difference is there then this become significant so if this increase what happened from sigma square to sigma square plus this this is the increase if this increase is significant then there is significant difference between the treatment means so what is that uh, for uh, we want to we want to get this a pre specified increase and what should be the value of n so that that increase can be can be understood or it can be and it, this increase can be computed or um, explained so then what is the increase is that if this is the this is the with increase variability this is the case if you divide by sigma then this is 1 plus 0 1 p p is the what is the percentage increase so this will be pre specified this will be specified now from here you will you will know what will be the value of n how because you know phi square equal to this and from the um, specification of standard deviation increase using this formula you will be able in a position to calculate i equal to 1 to a square tau a square by a so this quantity is this now phi square equal to n into this means phi equal to this then phi equal to this if i put this quantity as this then this is nothing but this value what do you do you find you choose a one n find out phi and then see the table uh, OC, uh, uh, see the oc curve and you see that whether the required beta value you are getting or not whether you are achieving the power 1 minus beta equal to 0.9 or not obviously you specify a particular alpha 
let it be 0 0.05. Then, so long you are not uh, getting the required uh, power, you increase and from th for this example, earlier example plasma etching example, we found that if n equal to 10, then it is giving the required percentage increase in standard deviation, which we pre specify as 20 percent. Okay. And then the last one is the confidence interval approach. So, what, what you are doing here, your hypothesis that means you are mu y minus mu j, that difference you are calculating, and the random variable is y 1 dot y i dot bar minus y j dot bar, this is the random variable. So, it expected value of is this variance is nothing but 2 m a c by n and that difference will for actually the margin of error will be plus minus t n minus a alpha by 2 root over 2 m a c by n this one. So, what do you do? You first consider 1 n find out this value and then find out the second n find out this value and like this. So, suppose the margin of error is given a particular value then you see so long the the this um, this margin of error is less than that particular less than that particular value or less than equal to that particular value you go on increasing the number in values and that is what is done here for this example we wanted to be 95 percent confident confident that that the each rate of any two power setting be plus minus 30 amps per minute and a prior estimate of sigma is already known which is 25. Then using the formula earlier given uh, that is the this margin of error given sigma square m a c then this value you calculate if your n is 5 it is 0 0.33 which is more than 30 n 6 30.11 more than 37 it is less 27.58 which is less than 30. So, say so n equal to 7 is selected for the desired accuracy. Okay, so, you can other way you can plot, you can have a plot if you if you if you are on you will have a plot this side n and this side t alpha by 2 n minus a and root over m a c by in. If we write like this, what will happen? You see that that this value is gradually decreasing as you are increasing value of n. But here we have pre specified the value 30, so that is why when it is becoming lower than 30, you are choosing that n. If nothing is pre specified, then you see that when it is becoming stagnant. When even if you increase the n, this quantity is not increasing. Okay. So, this way you can find out the sample size. Sample size calculation is very, very important. And in all other in the subsequent lectures, whenever when we will be discussing with the CRD we have discussed, suppose we will discuss RCBD and other things, then factorial design all the end there the sample size calculation is important and we assume that you know the how the how OC curve will be used or some other criteria or measures will be used to find out the sample size. Thank you.